Amen. Good morning and welcome to the Sunday School Service of the Church of God. We thank God for another day that He's given us <coughs> to worship Him and to be blessed by Him. Before we begin, let us open with a prayer. Almighty Father in Heaven, we thank You so much for Your love, Your grace, and Your goodness. Amen. Father, we thank You for the life that You've given us to use it to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for your words that we'll be able to study today. And we humbly ask for the leading, the guiding of your Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth, into enlightenment, that we may know your words, your will. We may be able to love it and follow it, Father, and obey it. Father, we ask that you bless us today. That you may keep us with you. Amen. This we humbly ask, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Our title for today, <clears throat> Departing from the Faith. Our scriptures will be from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. Departing from the Faith. To depart as used in our daily life, is to mean to leave one place to go to another. It is the act of leaving. The faith that is spoken of here. In Bible terms, there is many meanings to the word faith. But for our study today, This will mean the faith and the belief in the salvation and the sanctification that we receive from the grace of God, from His Son, Jesus Christ. That this is our saving faith. Having the faith is to mean that we are in the house of God. We are in the church of God. So departing from the faith is to mean leaving the house of God. Leaving God. And as our aim states, we will study today to warn against departing from the faith and to point out the causes and effects of doing so. We will begin with 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So we have a revelation, none other from the Holy Spirit Himself from the Spirit of God of things to come of prophecies and He is speaking directly He is speaking honestly of what the church is to expect that He is saying in the latter times Latter times, in relation to the early morning church, that after their time, there will some, first of all, the Spirit says, there will some that will depart from the faith. That just as we, re we have received the salvation from Jesus Christ, voluntarily, Consciously. And so will those that will leave the faith. That we are not forced out by God. But those who wish, who wish to stop serving Him. Will voluntarily leave. And stop serving Him. That they will leave the house of God. Why? 
why must they depart? If Christ is truth, if the church of God is the only truth, why must they leave? The Spirit warns us because it is possible. And we are living in perilous times. That there are many distractions in this world. That the Bible says the devil is as a roaring lion looking whom he may devour. And so the devil is always looking to bring down Christians. And there are many, many distractions of this world. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are only some of the things that can bring down a Christian, that can distract a Christian from his or her service to God. And this will happen. The second, th the second thing that the Spirit says. By giving heed to seducing spirits. That there are, as we have learned in the, in the studies past. That there is more than one Spirit in this world. That we have here the Holy Spirit. Giving us. Warnings, advice, and this is from the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Truth. But He also speaks of a false spirit, of a seducing spirit. Spirits that wish to harm your soul. And if we are not careful, if we let our guard down, we will start to listen to the whisperings of these spirits, which are the spirit of the devil. That we are not to let the devil talk to us, and we are not to listen to him. But the devil have seduced many, have seduced many in the false religion of this world. Amen. That he has told them that it is possible to be a Christian and be of this world at the same time. Amen. That you can go to church and still keep sinning. And that is very attractive to many. For in their minds, they can have a relationship with God while obeying themselves. And just to add to why people depart, the cares, the troubles of this world weighs on many. Not just those that are not in Christ, but especially those that are in Christ. For we that are in Christ face more trials and temptations than the average person. Amen. For like I said, the devil as a lion is looking to bring down Christians that he does not like anyone to be freed from his from his prison but he wants to bring the Christians back into his captivity so Christians depart because it is sometimes too difficult for them that they grow weary in serving God yeah. that they have lost their first love They have lost the fire burning in their souls. That they have 
put themselves above God. That the duty of man is to fear God and keep His commandments. Amen. And if anything else goes above that, then we start to lose our faith. And departing from the faith is not a sudden occasion. As I have learned, it is a gradual, it is a gradual process that just as you have weaknesses in the structure of a building, being eaten by termites, that slowly and slowly the building structure is weakening until it falls. And so just as, just as it is in a Christian's faith, that if he or she is letting the devil corrupt and weaken their faith, then slowly and slowly the Christian's faith will weaken. And to a certain point, it is so weak that once a strong temptation comes, mm -hmm. they will fall. And those seducing spirits, that we are not to underestimate them. We are to look unto Jesus, cling to His promises, keep our prayer life, Amen. keep doing the small things in our Christian service. Amen. For in giving heed to these seducing spirits, They turn into doctrines of devils. That we have the one true doctrine of the one true God in the Bible. And it is the pure Word of God. Nothing added, nothing subtracted. But anyone who teaches in addition to the Word of God or in subtraction to the Word of God, any doctrine that is not of God is of the devil. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Verse 2. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. If you have ever burned yourself, you know that that wound, once it heals, it comes back in a tougher, different color substance than your skin. And that is the scarring process. And if the burn was bad enough, then you would lose sensation in that area. So then this is what the Spirit is speaking of. That those who give heed to the doctrines of devils, to seducing spirits, will have as if their conscience is seared with a hot iron speaking lies and hypocrisy. So we have those that claim to be Christians, claim to believe in Jesus Christ, but they are hypocrites. For on the outside, they have an out, uh, outward holiness, mm -hmm. but inside, they are still sinners.
So they are pretenders. They pretend to be of God. To be followers of God, to be teachers of God. And because they are hypocrites, and they will speak lies to support their hypocritical living, they will also try to get you to believe what they believe in, to believe in their lies, that they will that they will even speak ill of the true Word of God. That what you believe in is not real, is not true, but what they believe in is the truth. And these lies do harm to their souls. That they believe it, they're blinded by it so much, that they can no longer feel the whispers, the conviction of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. that they start to believe their own lies. And just like a scar, it is permanent. That with some of these souls, their, their condition is actually worse than that of someone who has never heard the Word of God. For in their knowledge, they think they know much. Yeah. They think they know all. So when you try to preach the Gospel to them again, their hearts are hardened, that they will no longer hear the Word of God. But they will keep ignoring the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Verses 3, 4, and 5. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So now we, we come to some of the doctrines of the devils. That we, that the Holy Spirit predicted these doctrines. And as we know, it has come true. And first and foremost, he says, forbidding to marry. Marriage is a holy ordinance of God. That God performed the first marriage between Adam and Eve. That a marriage is between a man and a woman. And God said it was good. That it was good for man to have a partner, that it was not good for man to be alone. But these hypocrites, these hypocritical monks, priests, That on the outside, they claim to have the perfect Christian life. That this is perfection in God's eyes. But inwardly, they're sinners. Their worship is not accepted by God. That nowhere in the Bible does it say, man, a minister, cannot marry. But what did we learn? and the qualifications of a minister, that a minister is to be a husband of one wife. Amen.
And next, the Holy Spirit says, commanding to abstain from meats. Everything that God has created is pure and a benefit to us. And if we move down just one verse into verse 4, it says, For every creature of God is good, and everything, and nothing to be refused. So everything that God has created for us, He created in that garden, is good for us. Nothing to be refused. That in the Old Covenant, there were meats that were to be refused. But as we know, we now live in the new covenant of Jesus Christ. That everything, all the meats are permitted to be eaten. As long as it is prepared properly. As long as we receive it with thanksgiving. Amen. That there is no such thing as a dirty meat. For you give condemnation to God for calling His own creation dirty. <clears throat> and the most important part is that when we receive our food, our sustenance for the day, we are to give thanks. Amen. We are to say grace. Amen. For it is only by God's grace that we have food on our table. Amen. It is by His grace that He has given us strength to be able to work, to be able to afford our food. Amen. And it is by God's grace that we don't get sick Amen. from the food that we eat. So we must be thankful. For we did not farm the food that we, that we are eating. But we did not collect it. But it is God that has given it to us. <clears throat> and he says, For them which believe and know the truth, we are able to eat everything. to receive it with thanksgiving. But what joy it is to receive the blessings of God, to receive the grace of God, that it is His will for His children to enjoy all that He's created according to His will. Not in excess, but in His righteousness. And we pray for our food. Because this is how we sanctify it with the Word of God. That this is how God cleanses it. He blesses it, for we ask for His blessing. And so that is why Christians pray for their food. But we do not just go ahead and dig in and forget God. I read in a commentary that those that do not pray for their food do not deserve to even breathe. Mm -hmm. But God in His merciful grace does not take away our lives just because we do not pray. Mm -hmm. For how many people do you see pray for their food before they eat? So do not be ashamed to pray for your food. Amen. Amen. Whether you're at home or outside, be thankful Amen. for God's grace. And to add to those meats, that there are those who believe and holy, it's something called a holy week. 
that in one week out of the whole year, that they abstain from these meats. So somehow, this is their holiness. How about, let us have a holy week for every week of the year. <laughs> now let us not practice holiness in just word and deed, but in spirit and in truth. Now what is the point of abstaining from meats if you're still sinning, Amen. more or less, every day? Amen. So how about you abstain from sin mm -hmm. instead of meats that is given by God for our, for our health? Amen. Amen. Verse 6. If you put the brethren in remembrance of these things, you shall be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto you have attained. Putting the brethren in remembrance. As we, as we are studying today, departing from the faith. So as we have learned, you must first be in it before you can leave something. So those that are in faith are those that have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. <clears throat> and we are to keep our brethren in remembrance, to pray for one another, to strengthen, to encourage one another. Amen. For, for we are one family in Christ. Amen. Now we all have a part to do that though we are not all preachers, we all can encourage our brethren. Amen. That we can all pray for our brethren. We are to pray for everyone, not just for the strong, but especially for the weak. Amen. For everyone has a burden that they're carrying that we do not know of, but God knows all, and He will hear our prayers if we pray for them. <clears throat> and we are to make sure that we use the Word of God in encouragement. That we do not use it to bring down our brethren. But to use it to strengthen, to encourage them, to keep on the faith. Amen. To keep going in the race. For the brethren and for souls as well. For anyone willing to listen to the truth of the Word of God, we are to strengthen them by educating them on the love of God, to help them be freed from doctrines of devils, to help them. to see their lives in hypocrisy. For as long as there is life, there is hope. God has never given up on us. That though we were in sin, He waited. And He waited. 
until we finally accepted it. Mm -hmm. So let us be patient with our brethren, with souls. Amen. For in God's time, they will see the light. And by God's grace, they will be saved. Amen. Amen. Verse 7. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise yourself rather unto godliness. Profane and old wives' fables. Any teaching that is false and foolish are considered to be old wives' fables. Mm. Any teaching that is not the Word of God are old wives' fables. Foolish and false teaching. This world has many books. Self-help books. Books to help them be a better person. There are many advices and encouragements by professionals. But there is no better book to help a person live their life than the Bible itself, than the Word of God. And it is not limited to books. There are those motivational speakers Amen. to help you become a better person, to help you lead a better life. That those speakers will do nothing good for your soul. That if a preacher is not teaching the pure Word of God, then they're nothing but a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. That there is no blessing of the Holy Spirit on their words. That you will leave hungry still. That your soul was not fed mm -hmm. by the Word of God. So there is nothing more beneficial to our souls than that of the pure Word of God being preached by a minister or a teacher of God. That it is better to listen to preachings and teachings of the Gospel mm -hmm. than to listen to anything else. And by doing so, we apply the Word of God to our lives. It says, the Apostle says here, that we exercise ourselves unto godliness. Exercising in this world is to strengthen our fitness. It's to grow stronger. It's to have more stamina. And we are to do the same with our faith. We are to exercise ourselves to strengthen our faith. Amen. To build a stamina. For we are running a race. Mm -hmm. It is not a sprint, but it is a marathon to the end. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so we are to exercise godliness by doing every little thing that God would have us to do. To pray often. Pray without ceasing. Amen. Read and meditate the Word of God. Listen to the Word of God. Make sure that we do not miss any services, any prayer meetings. Amen. That we do not forsake the assembly of the saints.
Amen. Jude chapter 1, verse 3. <clears throat> Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. So we had exercise, and now we have contend, to earnestly contend for the faith. To contend, to contend is to fight, it's to fight for the faith, it's to defend it, for we are surrounded by falseness in this world. We are to fight for the faith that is given to us. Amen. The truth of the Word of God. That we will come across many false doctrines. But we know we have the truth in us. And so we are to fight for it. We are to educate souls on the truth of the Word of God. And if any say that their false doctrines are the right, are the true doctrines, then we are to defend ours by showing them the truth. Amen. And we are not only contending for the faith against others, but we are contending for the faith within ourselves. But we are fighting to keep our salvation, Amen. fighting to keep our faith. Amen. For Christ said, He did not say that the Christian life will be easy. But what He did say <clears throat> was that He will be with us to help us carry our burdens. That we are not alone. That we all have our burdens to bring. We all have our burdens to carry. Let us not be weary in carrying it. But instead, let us pray for God to give us the strength Amen. to carry it. To fight, to keep it, to keep putting in the effort. They say, it takes two to be in a relationship. And, the, and both partners have to do their part. And we know God will never stop doing His part. So we have to keep doing our part. Amen. And we can never stop. We are to keep trusting in God, to keep us. That as long as we put in that effort, God will always be there for us. Amen. Amen. My brethren, you are not alone. But if you are feeling doubtful, weakened, God is with you. Look unto Him. Do not look at your troubles. Do not look at the big mm -hmm. wave coming. Mm -hmm. But to keep looking unto Jesus. And remember, we are all here. Praying for you. We are to keep God above all, to love God. Above all. Amen. And 
Now we pray that you find that joy that you once had in serving Jesus. That if you think back to that first time you were saved, what joy Amen. and peace did you feel? Tell me, brother, do you still feel that? And if you don't, you have to work to get to that point again. <clears throat> to get to that point where Christ is your first love, You can't wait. To be with him. Amen. You can't wait to fellowship with him. Amen. To talk to him. To read his words. If you have lost that brother, I urge you to look for it. Amen. To find it. It is there. God will help you find it. Amen. You have gone too far to turn back. Amen. God has given you too much for you to throw it all away. And what we are going through today is nothing Compared to the glory that is waiting for us. Amen. Brother, remember, you are not little. You are not alone. We are with you. Praise God for His help. Amen. For His blessings today. Let us close with a prayer. Almighty Father, we thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you, Father, for never leaving us or forsaking us. Amen. Father, we know you are with us always. We are not alone. Your burden is light. Your, your yoke is easy. Father, we humbly ask for your strength and your grace <clears throat> to keep us with you. Amen. Especially those, Father, that are weakening, that are waning in their faith in you. Father, we pray that you strengthen your house, strengthen your church, Amen. that none may leave you, Father. That we abide in your word, we continue in your word, Father. That you keep us strong, keep us away from temptations, from trials. And you help us, Father, have victory over everything that we're facing. And Father, we pray for those that have departed from the faith. Father, we pray that you convict them with your Holy Spirit. Amen. You remind them, Father of that joy they once had with you. And same with those that are weakening. Strengthen them, Father, with your word, with your Holy Spirit. They may be able to regain a fire burning in their souls, to continue serving in you, to finish this race. Father, we pray that you keep your house with you, keep us with you, to finish this race with you. Father, we thank you for your love and your grace. 
This we humbly ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat>